And it's another 30k gold in just 3 minutes. Life can be so easy. Hey everyone, it's Ruben here and in this video I'm covering my Imperial City Werewolf setup. Now this is an Imperial City setup for stamina based characters as we do go into werewolf form. And this setup is just so incredibly powerful in Imperial City. You have a huge amount of weapon damage, you have amazing sustain and you have very powerful self use you have overtime damage effects, basically you have everything. I personally run this on my temple because I just love the tankiness that I have with my Templar outside of werewolf form and want, want to go offensively, I go into werewolf form. I have killed everything with this werewolf form, I have done one first X, I have done one first one, I have destroyed all the bosses in the sewers, I have killed Molek Ball, I have done all of this solo, killing Molek Ball took what, like 10-12 minutes, including his minions, killing the bosses overall takes 2-3 to three minutes. This one, for example, is a simple boss, takes me around 2 and two minutes and 20 seconds. The more harder bosses take me overall 3 minutes to 3 and a half minutes if I have the really powerful bosses with the self-heal and the other mechanics. And the build is also very powerful in PvP. This was the other day, this was actually yesterday. Well, maybe you're watching this video later, but basically I was live streaming in Imperial City and I was just showing off the methods of how you do the farming with the Telfar bosses for gold. And we ran into this PvP, like you can see, a lot of fun, it, it was great PvP, man, like 1 vs 6, 1 vs 7, they were like 7 EP, but after I killed a couple, then they were, they actually ran away from me, which was pretty cool, to be honest, if you are a brutal werewolf and players run away from you, believe me, it's like one of the most funniest and epic things that can happen to you in PvP. But this build is very simple to use, and it's very forgiving because of its resistances, and because of its instant healing. It's not something with figure or something that you know a newer player has a harder time with, that he starts to spend figure at like 30% health, even though it's an overtime healing. Hersing Rage, you can just spam it, and boom, you're back up to full health. So it is very nice for a new player to the Imperial City as well. Without too much further ado, let's get to the actual build, how it works, and how the rotation works. It's a lot of blah blah talking, but... Then you get all the information that you will need for the setup. So let's look at some of these stats that we can reach. In Imperial City, first of all, this is on our front bar. We have 3.2k weapon damage, this is without any enchantments procced. We have um, very high critical resistance, spell resistance and physical resistance. Then on our back bar we are incredibly tanky, 35k and 32k and 3k crit resistance. And then of course we have the wearable form. So let's go into our wearable form and let's look at the stats on our wearable form. We almost have 34k spell resistance and 31k physical resistance, 3k critical resistance and our weapon damage is 3.6k weapon damage. Now of course if we are in combat and we have some light attacks this can go up to 4.1k and this is without continuous attack. I didn't take any resources. So if you are in Imperial City and you take a resource and stuff like that, you also will get continuous attack by taking the District Flags and you will hit 4.6k weapon damage. Keep in mind that we also have 51k stamina and 10.5 stamina will add 1 weapon damage. So this can add approximately 5k weapon damage as well, which means our effective weapon damage will be around 9.4 thousand weapon damage, which is an incredibly high number. Apart from that, our sustain is very high, you see our health is very high as well. And we have a very good self-heal, the Hercene's Rage, to heal us from max percentage of our health. Okay, so what sets do we use on this build? What Mundus, what food, etc. So for the Imperial City setup, well, I actually run the Imperial Physics set. Now, of course, the Imperial Physics set, if you don't know this set, it is incredibly powerful. While you are in the Imperial City, you tap into the power of Telva Stones you are carrying, increasing health, magicka and stamina by 1000. While you have a 4 times Telva Stone multiply, this effect is increased by 600%. So currently it's at 7000, while you have a 4 times Telva Stone multiply, this effect is increased by 600. 
So the maximum amount we get is an increased 7k of health, magic and stamina. Now of course this is incredibly powerful, but the risk there is that you will have to carry 10,000 Telva stones in you and if you die in April City you lose 50% of your Telva stones. However, I really really recommend this because this just makes you so incredibly tanky and powerful and if you do the grind properly, if you know how to grind you can make like well, I mean, best case scenario, you make around 14, you kill a boss every 2-3 minutes. So that's why you make 15,000 Tower Stones every 2-3 minutes. But a worst case scenario is that you kill a boss with only 2 districts or something like that. And you get several thousand Tower Stones. Another thing is that you kind of have to carry 10,000 Tower Stones on you in Imperial City if you really want to grind those Telvar stones because you want a four time Telvar stone multiplier so you're going to be carrying 10,000 Telvar stones anyways so you might as well use the sets and the second one is Bone Pirate now Bone Pirate is really great for stamina characters if you're currently looking this guide and you are more looking into a magicka build I really would recommend to go with Bright's Throat instead of Bone Pirate as Bright's Throat is a magicka Bone Pirate so Let's get right to it, and we have two Bloodspawn. Bloodspawn is still the same, because it just can give us an incredibly nice buff for physical and spell resistance, and give us some nice ultimate generation, and the stamina recovery comes in very handy. So what I'm currently running is 5 heavy and 2 medium. You always want to have the smaller pieces medium, so hands and waist are medium, and all the rest is heavy. So Imperial Physic, 5 and 5 Bone Pirates. What do we run on the jewelry? So first of all, I myself am currently running two weapon damage and one stamina recovery. You can also choose to go with three weapon damage. I overall tend to go with three weapon damage if I really am focusing on bosses only and the farming part and I know or I don't really run too much into one versus X. If I do run into one versus X, I do go with two weapon damage and one stamina recovery just so I have that little bit of extra sustain. So, all the jewelry has the protective trait, very useful and really increases us to be much more tanky. Weapons, I have the Mace of Imperial Physic. I personally would go with a sword, not a mace, but I mean, my sword and board bar really isn't anything offensive. Like you can see, I do have a couple of skills, but when I go to the Imperial City, when I go back to my sword and board bar, it really is to use my resolving figure and to recover. And when I want to go offensively, I go into the werewolf form. So yeah, starting trait on the shield or impenetrable up to you with maximum stamina enchantment. And then we have precise with a weapon damage enchantment. Two-handed sword, we have Nurn Hound with weapon damage enchantment as well. I mean, it doesn't really make sense. But normally I run like poisons on this one. And that is like poison 9. You can choose to use like oblivion damage enchantment on your... Sword and board bar and then disease or well nerd no, note increase weapon damage. I really like this increase weapon damage personally, but you can also choose to go with something like disease. Now on the big pieces, if you have the gold for it, I would recommend to go try stand enchantments on the big pieces and the rest to go with stamina. If you really have the gold for it, then go try stand on everything like I have done. And everything, of course, with the impenetrable trait. Now, the temple build like this one is already up on my website if you want to check it out. Basically, you can run this setup with any character, any PvP setup, like swords or anything. The most important thing is just that you can go in werewolf form. So, werewolf form, let's directly dive into it now. The werewolf. We first of all, the ultimate morph that we have is the pack leader. You really want to do the pack leader, whether you are going to do PvP in Imperial City or PvE. Because the two dire walls that are being spawned are so incredibly powerful for damage negation. When I fight a boss or anything like that, the two dire walls are actually pretty good tanks. And the boss will quite frequently actually focus the small dire walls. And if I'm in PvP, um, I have seen enemies drop a meteor accidentally on my dire walls. They take damage for me. And they respawn within 10 seconds after killing, getting killed. So they come back quite fast. Really go with the pack leader. It also looks much more epic. So first one is Brutal Pounce. Now I go for Brutal Pounce over the other morph which will give you increased duration in because overall that extra duration that it adds to me is not going to make the difference of me going out of werewolf form or not. When you are in combat you can really stay in werewolf form for a long time and especially in the Imperial City you have plenty of NPCs around you 
just quickly kill one and devour and you have plenty of the rage and added hersin rage well healing you for 48 percent of your max health and granting you major brutality increasing your weapon damage by 20 percent always keep the major brutality up very important deafening roar not much to be said applies major fracture to them reducing the physical resistance by 5.3k incredibly powerful it's pretty much the deafening roar and hall of agony combo that you know fear the enemy light attack hall of agony spam crush an enemy with a deafening howl de dealing 13k physical damage use 30 percent more damage to enemies that are feared so you always want to do like a light attack and the claws of anguish or claws of life depending on what morph you have and after that you want to fear them and use the hall of agony combo with the deafening roar so claws well okay so this one can be a bit more tricky if you really want to farm pve if you really plan on going on a death campaign or farm pve i would probably go with claws of life because the healing you will be receiving from that will be so much and so good that you will barely have to worry about keeping your hercene's rage up for healing however in imperial city you will have many pvp encounters and overall even on a death campaign like dead imperial city there will be a couple of people who are farming the bosses and overall those people are quite experienced in pvp you are not gonna run really into an imperial city i mean 30 40 percent of the time i would say the players are decent but like 60 percent of the time or something i would say the few players that are there know how to play they they are in like duo squad or something they are farming bosses as well they might use the imperial physics set as well stuff like that so why is class of anguish so important because you afflict enemies with major defile for four seconds reducing their healing received by 42 percent and the health recovery by 42 percent as well so the major defile is incredibly important to give them that healing debuff especially if you're finding something like a standard dragonite which can't use a uh, purify or anything like that i mean they could if they get it from the alliance skill line but that rarely happens then it is very very useful or against the frost warden with some really powerful healing i really like the claws of anguish because you just neglect the enemy that much of self-healing now for the boon the mundus i actually use the atronic when i go to the imperial city the atronic is very important and nice because it increases our magicka recovery which is very important in pvp in imperial city because we have plenty of stamina recovery our weapon damage is very high because of our max stamina as well but we don't have a lot of magicka recovery if we don't run the atronic mundus and the atronic mundus is important for our self heal her scenes rage you really want to self heal and you want to make sure you have enough magicka so the atronic really allows us to have some more self healing which is important in one first x and when farming bosses and you might have already spotted it but i also use ws cameron throne pretty obvious we have to use ws cameron throne because we are using bone pirate on this setup and while you have a drink buff active your max time is increased so we gotta have to use a drink which best in slot is ws camera throne and it's also pretty cheap so that's very nice ws camera throne isn't too expensive compared to some other foods you can run like Art artium takeaway broth or anything like that now regarding ratios really any stamina based race will pretty much work orc will be very nice red god will be incredibly powerful you can even do it with a wood of aka bosmer imperial like any of these races will really work i have a guide on races on my website if you're curious about that and then of course the champion points now i will just copy this because it's exactly the same as my stamina tankler setup except that i just changed a little bit of skill so we got 40 in warlord 23 in sprinter we got moon cow 56 we got 23 in tenacity you could go for a little bit in arcanus like one two percent or even four percent if you feel like you're lacking that healing in imperial city personally with the atronic i have more than enough self-healing i also have a max pool of like 30k magicka which really allows me to spam like six heals don't forget it heals for like 48 54 percent of our max health and in imperial city we have around 38k health so that means you have instant heals of 19k which is incredibly powerful the foul increase the effectiveness of your healing reduction abilities fording tumbling reduce the cost of roll dodge and 14 shadow watch reduce the cost of block 32 in blast increase your healing done 66 master at arms 
you really want to increase your light attacks a little bit more or heavy attacks well in werewolf form you can go for a little bit in physical weapon expert then it's really up to you but i would probably go for like five percent or something like that then tomaturge we have increased your damage done with damage over time effects we have 23 in there 56 precise strikes 37 piercing 56 mighty iron glad 66 reduce your damage taken against direct 52 resistance 56 fixed skins, 32 elemental defender, 32 hardy, 32 quick recovery, increase of healing received. And that is pretty much all there is to know. We will now just go over the rotation a little bit and then we then we have everything covered. So first of all the human form. So first of all with the human form, there are two abilities you want to keep up at all times and that is restoring focus and of course ready ready is a self heal and restoring folks increase our physical resistance and spell resistance and it also gives us stamina recovery the cost is incredibly low it's 860 stamina where it also gives us a 240 stamina recovery every one second basically in four minutes uh, four seconds you already got more stamina returned from the ability that cost it uh, everything after that is just extra so those two you always got to keep up when you are in combat in the human form, what I always like to do is, I like to charge my ultimate. So, heroic slash uh, and light attacks. And that, that way you have some very decent ultimate generation. Now, like I said, this build isn't too offensive. You can kill some people with this build. You can use power of the light to get some good birds going, reverberating bash if they are healing, and keep your snares up with a heroic slash. However... Like I said, if someone has some really good self-healing, you probably will not deal that much of damage. Though in the Imperial City, we still have like 42k stamina. So your jabs will do quite some damage. The reason I have Remembrance on the back bar is because either I will outheal my enemy and then I will just charge my ultimate to go into werewolf form. Or I'm in a one first X situation where I don't see an opportunity to go into Werewolf form yet and I'm focusing on recovery. And Remembrance is just so nice to recover. When you get a lot of pressure, you can place down your rune somewhere, make sure your rally is up. And just before you use Remembrance, you, you use Extended Ritual, get rid of all those debuffs and you can use Remembrance for a self-healing and you also gain major protection, reducing your damage take. So this way is a great way to recover yourself when you get pressures. For the Werewolf Bar, there isn't too much to be said. Basically, the combo that you have to do with the wall time is um, Light Attack, Hall of Agony, and Claws of Anguish whenever they run out. Like The Werewolf setup is very, very easy. You just want to make sure the Light Attack Bleed stays up, and apart from that, you make sure the Claws of Anguish or Claws of Life over time damage effect stays up, and then it just Light Attack, Hall of Agony, Light Attack, Hall of Agony, Light Attack, Hall of Agony. You get low on health, her scenes rage, light attack, hall of agony. If you can fear your enemy, of course fear them, but you can only do that against players. You cannot do this against any of the big bosses, as they are immune to being feared. If you run low on stamina, do a heavy attack, followed by two light attacks, as whenever you do a heavy attack, you will be able to do two light attacks very fast afterwards. And that is pretty much all you need to know. Make sure to devour the corpses around you to stay in that juicy werewolf form transformation. And that's it. That's just the setup I run for the Imperial City and it's incredibly powerful. You have seen the stats and you can do one first X, you can do one first one PvP with it and you can kill any boss in the sewers like or in the districts. I killed more like Ball solo on it. It took me like, what? I think like 12, 12 minutes it took me to kill the tree smaller bosses and more like ball 12 minutes 10 minutes something like that not super long because i was solo it's a decent time all the other bosses take me typically the normal bosses like the easier to kill ones take me two minutes the, the okayish one takes me three minutes and they are really hard like the googly eye or the clan fear those are a little bit harder so you need to focus a bit more on your healing they take me like three and a half to four minutes though even that is not really happening that much anymore if you plan on going to the imperial city go there with a partner if it's your first time if you're going to run this build because you are just much safer together and once you are more comfortable with it more experienced with everything then you can go solo and farm those sweet sweet telfar stones 
I wish you all a great day. Bye-bye. See you in Terminal. I'm out.